he like he touched on a point that we had a lot of questions about and he was having trouble with filling vectorized objects sometimes they would fill the whole object instead of the section that he's talking that he wants for example so uh, he wants to know why that happens how he can fix it and anything that pertains to it so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you on the computer here a very easy setup that happens all the time and in this instance we've got a circle inside a circle and a circle inside a circle so I only I use circles because they're very easy to understand and very easy to see um, so in our example this can be anything this can be the outline of an image with the inner parts of an image like an eye or an arm or a fingernail or whatever it may be a logo so we're going to go ahead and go to WYSIWYR, which stands for what you see is what you get. And here we go. So what this gentleman's talking about in this example is, how comes he wants this, so he only wants the image to be filled in on the outside parts, and sometimes he gets this though, and he wants to know why. So, back here at our actual screenshot. We'll make them black to make them easier to see for you guys. These are grouped together and the way vectorization works is the computer system goes to the first boundary and it says alright from the first boundary to the next boundary I want to fill in. And then from that boundary in to another boundary it wouldn't fill in. So basically it's jumping boundaries and filling in those actual areas. So in this instance, there is no more inner boundary, so that's why the whole inner part is white. And this part is filled. But as you can see, they look exactly the same. They look like two objects with a circle inside of each other, but they're not. What's going to happen is, when you import any kind of image and you vectorize it, which is what he's, what he, what he's speaking about, you do not essentially know... Every, if all these lines are connected. So even though they appear to be connected, we're going to zoom in here. And now you can see that there's a break in this line. That is why this whole thing becomes filled, because what the computer system says is, I'm going to go from this outside boundary to the inner boundary. In this instance, there is no inner boundary because this is not closed off. So you can have this happen on any single image that you vectorize into it. It's going to read different color boundaries as lines. And that's how you get a line when you vectorize an image. It says, all right, I'm going from gray to black. So I'm going to draw a line there. That's how a, an image is actually vectorized. In this instance, it does not see any boundary, so it fills the whole thing. So an easy way that you can fix this is it's tedious because you're going to have to search your whole picture where it's colored in. So in this instance we know that this boundary is the problem because it's filling all the way through. So we're going to check the boundary all the way around it, which that's what becomes the tedious part. But once you do that and you get close up into it, you can go into point mode, which is over here on your left. We'll get Jeff here to show us that. It's right here. It's right underneath your ABC button. So once you click this, the machine is going to go into point mode. And what you're going to want to do is actually select your line. So you can come back over, Jeff. I'll pull this over here with this. And we'll zoom back in on our broken line. And once I select my line, you can see that there's two endpoints right here and right here. What you're going to do is, just like a Microsoft Word program where you want to select more than one thing, you hold down your control button, you're going to select your two points, alright? So you see how they turned, they're black so they're highlighted. On our item box here, you've got all these different pictograms. One of them is connect two points. So you've got a horseshoe, which is disconnect. And then you've got this thing that actually looks like a solo diamond ring. If you put your cursor over it, you'll see it'll just say connect two points. Once I connect those, it draws my line. And you can see how they change colors. You see how it's black? 
when I select them and I connect them, they, this actually turned green, letting me know, hey, this is actually one solid line now. And that's what happened. So now we can zoom back out. We're going to change our colors back to green because that's what I have for 2D fill. Make sure they're green. You go to WYSIWYR, and there you go. So I only use circles because it's, it's simplistic and it's easy to see why with the broken line. But in an image, you can have more than just one broken line. So even though you're searching this, this inner boundary thoroughly, it might take you a very long time to figure out where all the broken points are. And that's what makes vectorization of logos so difficult is the worse the image is, the harder it's going to be to get a perfect outline of what you exactly want to do when you want to engrave, especially if you're doing two-dimensional filling. He, he asked, based on this, he wanted to know what he's been doing is he's been importing files and he's been exporting them as a symbol. And when he exports it as a symbol, it loses its fill and he wanted to know how to get around that. Unfortunately, when you export a file in Gravistyle, it automatically turns back into an EPS file unless you export it as a GNH file. So when you're exporting it, it turns right back into an actual EPS file, which is why you're losing your fill. There is no way to get around that unless you export it as a GNH file. That's the only way you can keep your fill once you have it done on your job.